I'll meet a guy named Mutt. And what's your business card say, officially? I don't know. I don't really hardly look at it. Mutt's on a mission to save America's largest estuary. We've got a resource that's in crisis. The Chesapeake Bay. We're all working in cooperation to try to bring our oysters back. And it all starts at a Maryland hatchery with some oysters, some jars of algae, and some really big words. Fluoresces, like the crisis, Thalassius R. Fluorometer, inoculate, fractionated, Gosser's Mulleri, aliquotum. Freaking out. That's why I'm running the hatchery and you're doing TV. So let me sum up. I've been invited to my hometown of Baltimore from San Francisco by a guy named Mutt. You're Mutt? I'm Mutt. <laughs> Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. <laughs> the pleasure. What's your last name? Last name's Merritt. You're Mutt Merritt. Mutt Merritt. And uh, you have uh, given me a, a new wardrobe as well. What's the back of my shirt say? It says, Horn Point Laboratory Oyster Hatcher, restoring the bay one spat at a time. And what is a spat? That's a baby oyster. Baby oyster. What's a grown-up oyster? Grown-up oyster. How come a baby oyster has a special name and a grown-up oyster is simply a grown-up oyster? I have no idea. Listen, I appreciate your candor, but is this the kind of information we can expect? <laughs> uh, is, is this the ebb and flow I can look forward to over the course of this day? <laughs> Probably. Well, at least you know he's telling you the but truth. But you got to understand something about that slogan on the back. Uh -huh. It has a double meaning. One spat at a time means one baby oyster at a time. It also means the other mean for spat is a fight or of an course. argument. Of course. And there's been lots of arguments about oysters over the years in Chesapeake Bay. Why people arguing? What's the problem? Uh, we don't have enough, and everybody wants more. We need to find a nice middle ground so that we can all work together to try to bring it back. And what's your business card say, officially? I don't know. I don't really hardly look at it. I can tell you. Do you actually have one? Yeah, I have one. Really? You got yeah. it on you? Yeah. Let's have a look. I don't, I guess I don't have a business card on me. Well, let me see this. Now you're this... going to really make fun of me. I'm just, look, you have absolutely no money. You have what appears to be maybe 150 cards of some kind. I don't have any of my cards. Can you get him a business card? I could get him a business card. The man's dedicated his life. In there? This is not about me. Actually, it kind of is. Well, I know in your mind it is. But this is about this team that, that I'm part of. And All I'm right. really proud of being part of that team. I actually believe in what we're doing here. I'm a local Eastern Shore boy. I believe in the Bay. I know oysters are important to the Bay. And I think that what we're doing here is making a difference. And that makes coming to work pretty special. Come on. I'm going to sweat through your shirt. So why is it so important to get these oysters to reproduce? And why should we care? Well, by the 1970s, various factors had caused the Chesapeake Bay to lose 99% of its native oyster population. That's bad. Oysters are known as the kidneys of the bay. They filter out impurities in the water. So saving the bay means saving the oysters. And that begins with a whole lot of breeding right here. This is the hatchery, and this is the uh, What's the significance of the star, anything? We used to have pizza delivered, and they never knew which door to come in. So we said, we'll paint a black star on the door, and that's, that's where you bring the pizzas. <laughs> this is not rocket science, man. We're going in here. We're going to get some oysters to spawn. You guys tell us which ones we're going to spawn today. All right, we're going to spawn three trays today. We got one over here, 4-H. You want to grab that, Mike? Sure. All you want to do is shut the water off and then pull up the handle. We'll take this out. That's yep. good. Let it. Right? We're two. And then follow me. We'll go to the spawn table. Right in here? Okay, right here. And we're yeah. going to set up the uh, spawn. And what you want to do is the longer part of the shell is going to be on the bottom. That's how you know if it's face up. If you put it the other way, you wouldn't be able to see the eggs and the sperm come out. We want to see the sperm come out, right? All right. That's face up there, right? No, the other way. That's the other way? Yeah. yeah so that's, that's good. And that's right side up. All right. You got the hang of it. I got it, Bob. We've just hassled them. We've jostled them around. We've, we've 
put them on this table. And we want them to settle down. We want them to relax, get in the mood, if you will. Yeah, we light a candle, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, we've tried that. We've tried Barry White. We've tried Jimmy Buffett. We've tried everything. If they want to go and Mother Nature's in a good mood, this will be a wonderful event. If they don't, there is nothing I know to do that will get them to do it. Nothing. Flowers. Nothing. It's just like you. Whispering. But, again, my question is, at a glance, can you look at them and tell if they're male or female? Well, there's, no, you can't look at them now and tell if they're male or female. You would see he would expel sperm in a steady stream out this side, right or wrong here. The female is going to open her shells and pulse a group of eggs, and generally it comes out around here which is why we have them all oriented the same way. Because if you see sperm coming out here, you know it's not coming from this oyster, you know it's coming from this oyster. So we're gonna go on a boat. Three hours approximately will elapse. You'll have us back here in three hours. Uh, I hope so. Because this is why we're here. We don't wanna miss the, the big, okay. the big, you know, the opening of the shell. <laughs> Let's go on the boat. You can't rush the delicate spawning process, so to pass the time, Mutt wants to show me what the oyster reefs in the bay would look like if he wasn't there to give Mother Nature a helping hand. This is what an unrestored oyster reef looks like. It's got a few remnant oysters on it, a couple live oysters in here. The natural sets have been plummeting downward over the last 20 or 30 years. This is what the bay basically looks like if you don't mess with it. Yes. All right. So how far away is the next one? Put us on some good ones. No problem. So now we're over top of a restored bar. Wow. Everything you see like this, clustered like that, has come from the hatchery. Pretty amazing. This is all one, though, right? This is That's all, all from one shell. That's one shell. That was, that was one shell. That was like this. 14 or 15 live oysters on that one shell. You can see that shell down there. And that's good. Any muscle. Yeah. yeah why, we want, why, why is it good? Well, we want the reef community to be built up here. This is a sanctuary. This is where we're trying to maximize the ecological benefit of oysters to the bay. To really make it simple, what you're doing is allowing an original single oyster to basically grow at the same at the same pace, but with three, four, five, six, seven, eight times the efficiency. Mother Nature oh. needs a helping hand, and we've found ways to give her a helping hand. So we've been gone nearly three hours. We need to get going. I gotta get this dredge up before we can do anything. Always get the dredge up first. Always. The rookie mistake. I really do want to get back to the spawning, but like a crow spotting something shiny, I just can't walk past a bunch of bottles of colored liquid without asking some tough questions. What's all this? This is oyster larval food. This is algae. Yes. The larvae need to be fed. This is what we feed them. OK. And we start with flasks. Wait a minute. Everything in there is algae? Everything in there is algae. Is it all the same algae? Or no. Just each species has its own nutritional qualities, just like broccoli doesn't have the same nutrition as potatoes or doesn't have the same as steak. So we're trying to give our larvae a balanced diet, essentially. All right, so we have iced tea, we have an Arnold Palmer, yeah. and we have green tea. The four types of algae currently in your refrigerator are? Oh, you're gonna make me tell I you? I wanna hear it. Tetraselmus. Yeah. Isochrysis. Chigra and Thalassia sara, uh, su Sudanana. You yeah. got Thalassia Sudanana? Yeah. You know how unusual that is? What we can do is we can determine how many algal cells we want in each larval tank and what ratio of those four species we want in there. And we want to feed it four times a day, six times a day, 12 times a day. And it will, through fluorometry, which is a way to understand Come on. Come on. how many That's cells there are. Fluorometry? Yeah, look, you're in the science lab now. Buck up. <laughs> we pass a beam of light through an aliquot of water. A what? Aliquot, a little sample of water. OK. <laughs> These algae all contain chlorophyll. You yes. know what chlorophyll is. That has to do with the sun. Yes. Yes. Chlorophyll fluoresces at a certain wavelength. Yes. A fluorometer will measure how much of that wavelength is in the sample. 
freaking me out. If a fluorometry reading is 100. And then, just when I thought I'd heard so much information that my head was about to explode. Yes, Alex. Um, they're spawning next door, and the GoPros are set and rolling. OK. All right. Let's go. Coming in. So what do we got? So this is a boy. That's a boy right there. Um, he'll start spawning out of his side. You can tell because the uh, bubbles are beginning. Yes, you can tell he's opening up by that. This is a female. Let's let her. So the ball goes so in the flange, she opens up, and yep, she's going to open up watch her if right at you. What do you mean, right at me? Yeah, she's watching. So she'll watch clap it. right at you. I'm watching, but what, she, what is Just it? Just watch it. I'm watching. So do you see her opening up? Yes. Watch it. Do not move your. You're going to miss. I'm not going to miss. Oh. Yep, there you go. Look at that. See those eggs? Those are eggs? So those, all those are eggs. So it looks like sugar water. See them? So usually when the females go, we'll have a bunch of boys go. After hours of waiting, the males commence to fertilizing the eggs. And so begins the first step in millions of new oysters. Now, would you ever like move, like take this guy and put him over yeah. there? Yeah. Perpendicular? So you got stimulation here, so we spread the spread the wealth. Why don't you move that one over here to give these guys this guy over here? Yeah. All right, man. I hate to pick him up right in flagrante delecto. You know, it seems well, whatever. The male and female oysters are making oyster magic from which, if I remember my biology class, baby oysters will be produced. So what do they do with all the babies now? So what she's doing now is pouring larvae from one of these tanks through a series of sieves, smaller, 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 and she's fractionating them out by size. Fractionating? I'm not sure that's a word. So the cold water forces the larvae to close up, yeah. and then gravity pulls them through the sieve. Remember, these already have shells. They have shells. They have shells. Yeah. They have shells 24 hours after the eggs hatch. I didn't know that. That's a very fine, fine. Yeah. 224 microns. And a micron is what? A thousandth of a, of a millimeter. So that's super, super thin. Yeah. So essentially, that's a fine as sieve as you can get. Oh no, they no. get a lot smaller. Really? Than that. We've got oh, 20 yeah. micron. Where do you keep that? In the spawning lab. All right. OK, where were we going to go? We're, we're going to go, go look at these microscope. under the microscope. Let's do that. Two Stephanie, 12, thank two. you. You're very welcome. There's your baby oysters. Huh. And you can see them swimming around. So they, oh, you can even see, you they really the look like an oyster. Yeah, they look like a little clam to me. Yeah. Yeah. They have a black dot, which is called an eye spot. It's not an eyeball. They don't see with it. Nobody really knows what they do with it. What's happening there? That's a, called a velum. What is it? What's happening? It's an organ. It's, it's got cilia on it, and it's moving oh. those cilia to swim. Well, I, this is really cool. Troy, are you getting this? It's pretty cool, man. Well, here's one. See the foot that's coming out now? Yeah. Looks like a little snail. So that's, right. that's setting behavior. These guys need to settle down and crawl around and find a place to glue themselves. Right. And then they turn into a spat. In the hatchery, we remove the predators. We give them the proper diet. We keep the temperature and the salinity correct. We pamper them until they're ready to set. And they set under controlled conditions. And then we throw them off the deck of the Robert Lee, and they're on their own for a while. You know? So, but you know, but we've taken away most of that early mortality right. by doing it inside in the hatchery. I got it. There's a guy crawling. Looks like a little snail. I, I find this really amazing. I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people watching have never seen a microscopic oyster that still looks like an oyster. That's swimming. That's swimming. Ah, yeah. This is, fa this is fascinating to most people. I mean, yeah, I can't, I, I can't look away. You should have shown me this right from the start. That's life. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a handful of life. OK, it's official. Baby oysters are adorable. But what we need are spats. And spats need to attach themselves to old oyster shells. Where are we going to find those? Oh, there's some.
Dr. Mutt Merritt has dedicated his life to growing baby oysters, not because he loves to eat them, but because he wants to save the Chesapeake Bay. In his hatchery at the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science, Mutt has millions of oysters that are ready to get out into the wild. This tank has been filled with water from the river. It's got the clean cages of shell, and it's gently being aerated. Yes, and now we're going to take 4.86 million harvested larvae, and we're going to dump them into the appropriate tank. Correct. How come I have to wear a hard hat, and neither of you do? You look better in it than I would. These are the actual larvae here in this little piece of used Kleenex. Yes. At a glance, one could confuse it with some mud or maybe yes. some dirt. Yep. Can I smell it? Sure. Yeah. Doesn't smell like anything. That's a good sign. All right, good. If it smelled fishy, that means we left them in the fridge too long. <laughs> May I insert the larvae into the bucket? Yes, please. Doctor, Fine. now what? Now we wait until they start swimming. Once the larvae get acclimated to the water and start to swim, it's time to set them free. Or at least as free as you can be if you're a baby oyster. I'm trying to shake them up a bit. It looks like water, but it's actually millions and millions of larvae. Is it larvae or larva? Larvae. Neither. He's good. Not, we might... Yeah, not too shabby. He's, he's, he's trainable. He's got a lot of mouth with him, though. <laughs> There's a spat. All right, that's a spat right there. Yep. And there's and there's one right there. I can't. I don't see any spats on here, man. Yeah. Well. That's why I'm running the hatchery and you're doing TV. <laughs> Fair enough. Now it's time to get these guys loaded up on the boat so they can get to work cleaning up the bay. Hit me with some math. How many oysters in each tank? Like 1.6, 1.7 million spat per tank. How many tanks? We're going to put 10 tanks worth on this boat today. So 1.7. Six, 16 or 17 million right. baby oysters will go overboard today. Bigger on up, all the way. Okay, we're gonna go over to the boat so you can see what happens to them now. You've delivered them halfway there. Right. Let's go see the rest of the journey. Mutt's gonna take me over to the boat we loaded up earlier so I can see the final step in this bay saving process. Howdy, you're Captain West. Yeah, thank you for coming out. Wouldn't miss it, Mike. Great. Permission to enter? Sure. So as soon as we get on here, then I'm gonna go up and start the pump. Uh huh. And then I'll come back here, and then we'll start the planning. And the planning involves a hose and a bunch of pressure and the blowing of the right the yep. shells off the. He's now priming the pump to make sure the water is uh, able to be pulled in, like like a siphon, I guess. Except rather than sucking on the pipe, he's used a, a much more sensible approach. Right there, you can see the results of that approach. So unless I'm mistaken, I believe this, this boom will ultimately be raised and the pressure will allow us to direct the water onto the shelves, yeah. thereby distributing the shelves. These two levers, you just pull up on them slowly. You'll see the shells start to go off. I'm opening doors here, right? Yeah. I don't have four million kids, but I imagine if I did, this is what it would feel like to see them finally leave home, or maybe not. Regardless, it is satisfying to see the culmination of this entire process 
and know that those tiny little spats are going to be hard at work for the next few years, making this bay healthy. So on the one hand, we're blowing some oyster shells off the deck of a workboat with a big giant hose. But on the other hand, we're saving a river. That means they're spending millions of dollars on billions of oysters covering 377 acres. And right in the middle of all of it, a man named Mutt. Somebody had to do it, right?